Welcome to ExpertDoc Smart Flows. In this session, we're going to have a look at loops. Loops are used for retrieving line items, like these quote details. First, make sure that your data set will hold your line items. They can be found under the one to many relations. One quote can have many line items. I've added the quote line to my data set. And you might want to remember the name of the relation, quote underscore details, because we're going to need that later. From the quote line itself, I've picked up the relation to the existing product in the product catalog. Let's switch to our template. You might have to refresh it after you've made changes to your data set. I have already added a little table. So let's start with adding some fields to that. In the data set, you need to look for the line items. To find them, you can use the name of the relation that we just added to our data set, quote underscore details. I can click that open, expand the data set to view all the fields of the entity. I can find my existing product from the catalog in there too. And from that entity, I'll use the name. And from the line item itself, the quantity. The unit price. And the total line item price. You might want to format those fields straight away, numbers, currency fields, but you can also do that later. Now for our first loop, we are going to take three easy steps. Step one is to select the area you want to repeat. In this table, it is the one table row that I want to select. I'll hover in front of it. I can see the cursor change. And by clicking, I can select the whole table row, including the line ending. Step two, in our data set, we're going to look for the repeating item. In our example, that's the quote detail. It's always the item under the relation. You can check this by clicking the relation itself and see that quote detail is repeating in the field inspector. So quote detail is our repeating item. Step three, hit the loop button. This has added the loop box around the table row. And if we switch to the mapping list, we can also see our loop over quote detail. So let's create a preview. That's looking good. That's our first little loop. You can loop almost anything, a table row, a whole table, an ordered list, an unordered list, a paragraph, or a page. However, you cannot loop a table column or multiple rows in a table, but I'll show you a workaround for that in a bit. Let's first loop over an ordered list and over a paragraph. Again, from my data set, I'm going to map the name field. I'm going to select as step one, the item that I want to repeat. Step two, I'll select the repeating item, quote detail. And step three, I'll add the loop. For those that haven't been paid attention, I'll do it again. But then for a paragraph, I'm going to add my name field, price per unit field from the quote line itself. Wrong field, excuse me. 
going to select the item I want to repeat. And for this, I will want to select the paragraph and maybe an extra blank line to add some space between the different products. Step two, select a repeating item. Step three, add the loop. Let's create a preview again. Nice ordered list and a list of paragraphs. Let's have a look at the settings of our loops. Go to the mapping list, select the loop itself and open the settings dialog. In there, we can change the loop field. We can reverse the loop if we want to. And the other two options will remove white space between each item in your loop or will restart numbering uh, lists that have multiple levels. Both of them are explained in the manual. On the sort tab, we can sort our loop. We can select a field to loop over, for instance, the price per unit. We can use that as a number field and we can set the sort order. Let's create a preview again and see what effect that might have. Looking good, this time our list is sorted by the unit price. Let's go back to our loop and look at the next setting. On the limit tab, we can limit the number of records we want to show. For example, the first three or the last five. By combining those options, you can also create a comma separated list. Let me give you an example of that. First, let's map our products. From the data set, I will pick the product name. And again. Then I will loop over both fields. First, I select the field, I select the repeating item, and add the loop. I'm going to do that for the other field too. And add the loop. If I would preview this, it would certainly look messy. Let's have a quick look. That looks like not such a nice comma separated list. So what we're going to do, we're going to return to our loop here. And we're going to make sure first that the comma is within our loop box. And I can do that by walking through the field and the loop box by using the arrow keys. So I make sure that I'm still in the box of the loop. And in there, add the comma. Can delete the other comma. Then I'm going to do the same for the space. So I want to be sure that I'm in the box. I'm going to add a space. And I'm going to make sure that the remaining space is repeated or deleted. Excuse me. I'm going to have a preview again. And this time, I hope that I have a nice little comma separated list with not too many spaces. That's okay. Now I want to limit the first loop to all the items except the one, the last one. So I'll go to the settings, set the limit to loop over all occurrences except the last one. Okay, and for my other loop, I'm going to go into the settings. And here, I'm going to loop only over the last one occurrence. 
if I now create a preview, I should have a nice comma separated list of my four items. And that's correct. We also have a setting to control the break behavior of a loop. Instead of repeating this paragraph, we want each item on its own page. So let's go into the settings of this loop. Let's go to the break tab and turn on the break behavior to go to the next page. Let's create a preview. And now nicely each product will have its own page. The last option is table merge. As I said earlier, we cannot loop over multiple rows in a table. But what we can do is create separate tables and glue those together with the table merge option. So we can split this table in three parts. We can map our fields. I'm going to take the product group description field. I can now add a loop over this table. And in the settings of that loop, I can select table merge. I'm going to merge the tables generated by this loop all to one table. So I'm going to merge the loop table together with the table above it and under it. Now let's create a preview. And that's looking pretty good. This is it for loops. Next, have a look at result sets if you want to filter your loops or have a look at grouping. Thank you. Bye bye.